Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, what I want to share with you today, this is a wild one. Uh, many of my brothers and sisters in Christ over in the United Kingdom had sent me this. When I first saw it, I said, there's no way this is true. And then I had to remind myself again, nothing should surprise us anymore because Jesus said the last days would look exactly like this. So thank you to all my brothers and sisters in Christ in the United Kingdom that had sent me this. Uh, I wanted to make sure, obviously, that this really did happen. And folks, this really did happen recently. Uh, here's a recent article. There are many different sources reported on it. This is one from the Washington Stand from Ariel Del Turco, an article titled, United Kingdom Woman Arrested for, listen to this, Praying Silently, Silently, Outside Abortion Facility. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, there's no way this is true. But it is, folks. Let me read some of this to you. Just before Christmas, a stunning video showing the arrest of one United Kingdom citizen who was silently praying near an abortion facility in Birmingham, England, went viral on social media. In fact, let me show with you some of this video. Um, before I ask you any questions about what's going on today, I have to caution you, which is just your rights, which is you do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention one question. Something that you later on in court, anything you do send me is you know. uh, what, what are you here for today? Uh, physically, I'm just standing here. Okay. Why, why here of all places? I know you, you don't live nearby. But this is an abortion something. Okay, that's why you're standing here. Is you standing here part of a protest? No, I'm not are you, protesting. Are you, are you praying? I might be praying in my head. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you once more, will you voluntarily come with us now to the police station for me to ask you some questions about today and other days where there are allegations that you've broken public space of protection? Uh, if I've got a choice, then no. Okay, well then you're under arrest. I can't suspicion of failing to comply with the public space's protection order, which is under the uh, Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act 2014. Now I'll caution you again, you don't have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later on in court, anything you do say may be forbidden. Do you understand the caution? I do. Um, your arrest is necessary. There you have it, folks. It really did happen. So you see the police officer walk up to this, this lady who's standing quietly on the, si the uh, sidewalk and says, what are you here for today? And she replies, physically, I'm just standing here. The police officer says, okay, well, why here of all places? I know you don't live nearby. She then replies, this is an abortion center. The police officer says, okay, that's why you're standing here? She nods. Then the police officer says, um, is you standing here part of a protest? And she says, no, I'm not protesting. Then he says, are you praying? And then she goes, I might be praying in my head, but not out loud. So after she says to the police officer that she was silently praying in her head, then the police officer asks, asks her to go to the police station for questioning. When she declines, she was arrested. I mean, folks, you can't make this stuff up. Again, a United Kingdom woman was just arrested recently for praying silently in her head outside abortion facility. Folks, it's clear as day we are living in the last days. We are living as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot. Evil is being called good. Good is being called evil. You try to speak out or even pray in your head against these blasphemies against God. You are the one that's called evil. You are the one that's going to be hauled off to jail. That's where we are, folks. And it shouldn't surprise you if you know your Bible. But this is what I can tell you. If you're watching this video right now, and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around you right now. Look at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. 
Jesus is alive and Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you could be saved right here, right now as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus loves you so much. And he demonstrates his love for you for what he did for you on the cross. In Romans 5, 8, we read, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loves you. He loves you so much, but the bottom line is Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you, I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now, because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming and he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me, and God bless you all.